What's up and welcome to Idol Insights, a show where each week I, Trevor Bettis, get to talk to interesting people about Idol Champions and Dungeons and Dragons. With this week, again, is the amazing Megan Kenrick! Hello, everyone! Hello! It's so you... good to be back. Yeah! It's, it's, it's the last Idol Insights of the year. We're, we're just wow. hanging out here at the, at, the, at the end of the streaming schedule. I'm not even <laughs> used to 2022 yet. I'm not ready for 2023. Right! I'm like, I, I know I've been writing it on things, but I don't feel like I've actually... It hasn't felt like it's 2022. <laughs> All of my I... spreadsheets are 2022 for any month I'm talking about next year. <laughs> very, very not confusing for everybody. Absolutely not. Not in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Megan, uh, th thank you for coming back. Um, uh, you know, in, in case people haven't seen the, the last episode or any of the ones that you've been on, who are you for the fine folks you may not know? I am Megan Kendrick, and I am a, a streamer, and I'm also a contract graphic designer for uh, Wizards doing layout work for um, Adventures League. Uh, the Ooh. most recent streams that I've been in were uh, Legends of the Multiverse, which is super fun because we had... Um, a different DM every few games and special guests. Um, upcoming, I have a, a couple of things coming up, but I'll, I'll wait until we get to that later. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's mainly it. Oh, and I, of course, have Whittle available in yeah. Idol Champions, which is why we're here today to talk about that. Indeed, we are. We'll say for Legends of the Multiverse spoilers, Brennan doesn't TPK them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> much, much uh, you know, things Just happen, try. though. <laughs> does try does try honestly and i have never tpk'd so i would have been happy oh i i don't think i don't think i've ever been a player in one i have absolutely done one as a dm and then went oh no <laughs> <laughs> um i have actually only died once in a game of D, &D and that's when really? i was at san diego comic-con where Abria was DMing, and I made the mistake of telling everybody that I had never died before, and of course she like kills me instantly. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> She's like, and you die. And you did. <laughs> it was good times. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've only killed uh, I've only killed a few players. Uh, unfortunately, and, and I, I've said this on shows before, the the I have killed one person multiple times and not on purpose, and uh, all of those characters ended up being my wife's. Uh, oh. <laughs> it was literally I'd never gunned for it or anything. She just rolled some dice, and then she was like, "Well, I'm dead." <laughs> The, whatever dice she was rolling needs to be put into dice jail. Oh yeah, no, it did. Indefinitely. The they they actually gave an extra middle finger because she <laughs> chucked the d twenty and it rolled a two on the floor. Like it was just like ha -ha! it had the last say. Still, it did. It did. Yeah, and the, yeah. The other one was a Dragon Age RPG, and she was trying to become a Grey Warden, and she rolled for it. And I was like, "You rolled literally the one number you need to instantly die." <laughs> so did. Did she have to create a new character in the yep. game? <laughs> yep. That's too much pressure. Do you understand how long it takes me to create a character? <laughs> oh no. Well, see that that's a good that's a great thing about my wife. She she is that that is her forte. Like she's sitting there and always making characters. Like she made a save specifically in Skyrim right as you got off the wagon so she can just go in and make a new character anytime. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. She that's, that that's that, that is her thinking. biz. I agree with that. <laughs> Um, but let, let's uh, let's talk a bit about uh, Whittle because uh, Whittle just got a new look, uh, and, and <laughs> it is a look. Um, uh, so, yeah. why would you tell us a bit about that? So, Whittle being the uh, the Lord of Barovia, I really wanted to lean into that and make her look regal, and I didn't want her to just look like a female gnome version of Strahd. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of put a Pinterest board together of some things that I was thinking, and she ended up looking super badass. So <laughs> the, the first thing that catches your eye, um, if anyone has seen it, I have posted a GIF on Twitter. Um, her cape looks like bat wings, and it almost looks mechanical, which works out perfectly for her. She's a gnome. Mm -hmm. And she almost has like a Bram Stoker's Dracula, like braided gray hair as horns. Um, her goggles are now just one red monocle, and she's wearing a red corset with um, black leather pants and thigh-high boots, so definitely a, a little different from what we're used to seeing from Whittle. Um, and my favorite thing is her blunderbuss is a repurposed Asmodeus's ruby rod. That's I didn't think the artist would be able to pull that off, but they're just like, yeah, got it, and it looks 
incredible. <laughs> I, I mean, like, it's just like, I, I didn't know that part, that detail of it until you tweeted it yesterday. And so already say like, that's an incredible skin and, and Whittle's a dark Lord. That's incredible. Oh, she also has the Ruby rod. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whittle has, uh, she's done some things in her past. <laughs> <laughs> now, because I haven't gotten to watch uh, uh, all of the the Heroes of the Plains, um, was that something that happened during that 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 she got the rod? Yeah, so that was the finale of that show, and every single person in that game was agonizing about how we were going to approach attacking Asmodeus, and I just kept thinking and thinking. I was like, oh, I can do time stop, but it, as soon as I affect Asmodeus, he's gonna wake up. Um, so I think I did delayed blast fireball. And at the very end, um, Todd was a DM for heroes of the plains. I asked if I could steal the Ruby rod and he's like, yeah, sure. He's going to wake up, but I, I did it. And then I ran away with it. And, uh, yeah, it's a blunder bus now. And now it's a blunder bus. That's, <laughs> that's pretty. I mean, the, when, when you go through the, the history of that weapon, it's just like, oh yeah, it was from Mount Celestia and it was given to the uh, uh, Asmodeus to do this. And he ruled the nine hells for all these centuries. It's like, and now it's a blunder bus. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's a gnome that's the Lord of Barovia that has it and turned it into a blunder bus. What the <laughs> But honestly, though, like, that's the sort of stuff in games that, like, gives me life. Like, when you can take this legendary item from D&D that has this, has all this lore and history behind it, give it to a player, and they make it their own. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I love that. I love it. I, I've I love done that chaos. in my... Oh, yeah. I've done that in my games, but not told the player that they have a legendary item. <laughs> like, one of my players had Jarlaxle's Hat of Disguise for about two years and didn't know. <laughs> and Jarlaxle never came after him? Oh, no. They, 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 uh, he had gotten it from Jarlaxle, but didn't oh, know it was gotcha. Jarlaxle. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I I love that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of afraid if we uh, get back into that game that Asmodeus is going to kill me. So, um, I mean, y'all did drop a Tarask on him, right? I remember yeah. that? Yeah, might might I, be a little guess, peeved. I don't I don't know if he's dead dead. He's, I mean, de he's definitely pissed. I feel like D and D like mainline characters are like comic book characters, or like they're never dead forever. Like they're like Kenny from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As as let it, let the record show, Asmodeus is like Kenny from South Park. Oh you killed Asmodeus. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps coming back. Oh God, that'd be so good. <laughs> see a South Park episode of Asmodeus in Colorado now. <laughs> But no one's calling attention to it whatsoever. No, it's totally normal. Yep, just a normal day in South Park. That actually sounds very reasonable for them. <laughs> just, just just a big guy with a, a big parka on. Yes. Uh, I, I saw somebody in chat. By the way, we're live. You can put questions in the chat. Question, colon, and then your question. And Megan and I will talk about them at the end. I did someone say, uh, see something about the audio levels. I'm extremely loud. I'm actually going to sit further away from my mic. I apologize. We we, we, we messed with some stuff beforehand, but technology is what it is. Uh, so. I, I will try to project my voice because I, I, do na I have a very naturally small voice. It's always been a problem. I apologize. I will, I will try to speak louder. And I have naturally had an extremely over-the-top loud voice. So. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your patience. What it's is just like, it's good life advice for me to project my voice a little more. So this is good practice. And it's good for me to always remember to lean away from the mic when I laugh, <laughs> because I will uh, uh, make people go deaf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one, one of the things I want to ask you about the skin, though, is that, like, you know, you, you worked with the artist and everything on this. Do you have, like, a headcanon for, like, how whittle ended up with this look or anything like that i think it's just that she has been living in barovia for such a long time that she finally started to lean in <laughs> to being a dark lord the whittle dark lord um that that's really all that is i'm assuming she's been there for a couple hundred years and she's had time to do some shopping and <laughs> you know repurposing some things well, that that actually makes me think of another question that I didn't even have written down. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think Whittle like would have changed in Barovia? Like, do you think anything would would have been different, or was she like, ah, it's fine like that? 
So one thing that she actually did change about Barovia is that it's kind of a safe haven for squidlings now. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> um, she did start a school for squidlings um, throughout the multiverse. So squidlings are are coming from other settings now to live out their lives and educate themselves uh, in the land of Barovia. I'm so sorry i know barovia is supposed to be the super scary place and um i've made it less scary and squidlings are super cute and there's a squidling familiar and idol champion so no you, you just make it so that the squidling school is like the school from wednesday where it's like it's just it's a yeah. super super gothy school it's it's a very gothy school <laughs> It's the school I wanted to go to as a teenager. <laughs> it's just got all of the, you know, little cliques that normal high schoolers have. You know, there's like a squidling clique that's emo, and then there's one that's a bunch of metal heads, and then there's the popular squidlings. I'm now picturing in my head an emo squidling, and I don't know <laughs> how I feel about myself. It's just, it's just the sideswept bangs. Yeah, 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 exactly. Just walking around whistling My Chemical Romance. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay, so so going with that idea though, like, do do you do you ever sit down and, or I mean, maybe not purposefully, but do you ever like come up with more whittle lore in your head for the character while, while she's off air, uh, not on streams or anything, or do Definitely. you just kind of wait for you, you do? Yeah. So in a familiar quest, we discover that whittle has a dungeon below castle Ravenloft where she is growing a bunch of squidlings or like replicas of Whittle. So I was mm -hmm. trying to figure out what alignment Whittle would eventually end up with because I just kind of threw it out there not thinking chaotic neutral. Mm -hmm. That that seemed like the most accurate thing. Um but you know if she's if she's growing um versions of herself I I don't really know if that means she's good or bad i think it really depends on I, what, the, I, what the purpose was there because we never yeah. figured out what the purpose was yeah like like you know if if the the goal is to create clones of herself to for multi-planar domination then maybe a little evil there <laughs> yeah there was definitely something going on um when todd was dming um, so, you know, that classic painting of Strahd on the balcony. Yes. I, so, <laughs> so Whittle has two squidling gargoyles on either side of her. <laughs> and we never found out why. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Yeah, that, uh, I I did now think that like the I I was like okay, what would be the good version though? Not not multiplayer domination. What would be, and essentially just the the uh, the Michael Keaton movie multiplicity, where he's yes. just like yeah, I just need you to do my laundry. Um, it's, you know, it, it probably started out like that. I think <laughs> Whittle is is very logical and probably doesn't want to do chores. Um, there was a bunch of renovations happening to Castle Ravenloft that weren't going so well, so maybe clones were her solution for that. Um, but then she... the clones started attacking us in a familiar quest. So I think mm. somebody will look at that and say, hey, what the hell, Whittle? <laughs> <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> if you're going to make clones, you're going to train them how to be nice. Oh, jeez. So what 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 are the, the things that I do want to bring up? Um, th this is actually kind of tied into a conversation that was going on in the uh, TGRPG community yesterday uh, because of a, a, a clip from uh, one of the Dimension 20 shows where Brennan was interviewing Lou and Lou said, you only need one set of dice. Like, like uh, that just, it sent ripples out through the community of people just, <laughs> cl you know, grasping their dice sets going, oh, <gasps> um, and, and no shade at Lou. I think, I think it's a fight opinion. If, if you're able to only have one set of dice, oh my gosh. I, yeah. I really do appreciate the discipline there. Um, I do so really... dream about being a minimalist. I wish I only had one of everything so that I didn't have to keep everything organized. Yeah. I, however, am the opposite of that. I am a hoarder of dice. Same. Um, Tamor actually had a panel at PAX Unplugged, and he was like, you know, you would need 400 dice to be able to do this, talking about game, game mechanics. And he was like, who who has 400 dice? And I was like, 
me <laughs> me oh yeah i i i mean i have a i have a giant bag of dice sitting over here it's a beholder bag and nice. i like essentially anytime i stop using a set i just dump it into there um mm -hmm. and then i have other sets just kind of spread out like where, where's that i don't know where my box is i have i had a box down here that was all the sets i was used to be using but now i have my shiny idol champions uh nice. little, little box here that i got my I metal dice in yeah mine, um, mine is just outside of arms reach, but I have <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah no i i i I, I, for me, I've always just loved having the dice. I, I you know, as the internet says, the shiny math rocks. I love those. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first, I did only buy one dice set. I remember buying my first dice set, and then later on, um, my when we made other characters, my wife was like, "Well, I need a new dice set." I was like, "Why?" She's like, "Well, I'm making a new character." And I'm like, yeah. "Oh." Oh, that's kind of a cool idea, and I started doing that too. So, so I wanted to ask: Do you, do you have like a, a, an accessory set up for for uh, playing Whittle? I I think I have one for every character I've ever played. Um, yeah. <laughs> the first dice that I ever got was from Level Up Dice, and they were black um, with uh, purple numbers, and Ooh. that was when I was playing um, Sophia's back on silver and steel yeah and she was a wizard and she's she's kind of spooky spooky kind of gothy um so i really felt like i would have more luck if they matched you know my character's aesthetic um i think i probably have 10 sets of dice for whittle though because oh, i think really? i played that character the most out of all of my characters um i just got another set of dice <laughs> from back some plugs <laughs> uh, at level up dice i think we spent like 700 dollars on like dice and trays and everything because everything had to match oh right? yeah no i i get it i get it no 100 percent. i mean yeah no that, that would be that'd be a fun purchasing yeah. day <laughs> yes. uh so yeah i have i have a dice problem yeah oh no i i'm i get the the dice that are in here the these are uh these are for a specific character like he calls himself the green dragon so i got like nice. little green metal oh, dice those are pretty Oh, it's actually catching the the green screen for a moment. <laughs> uh, no, I I'm I'm fully in that. It, it it's one of those like it's dopamine hit, and, and mm -hmm. I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy and ride this dopamine high as long as I can. And if it's well, even just they, they have the pretty jewelry lighting, you know, when you go to a jewelry oh, store yeah. and everything is catching the light perfectly. Oh yeah, you're like a bird with shiny things. Like I have to have this. <laughs> for the longest time i've wanted to get a, a dice box that was like the ring case that i proposed to my wife with <laughs> because it actually those. it had a little spotlight in the lid so you'd open it mm -hmm. and this light would turn on and you know show off the sparkliness of the of the ring and i'm like i want that for my dice yeah, yeah. i want that above my gaming table <laughs> just the whole display light setup i don't know how that would work you know it'd be great how it's, you could actually play on it but that would be cool it's like a dim room but you've got that one like stripe of light going across your dice like like morticia mm -hmm. adams in the in the 90s movie on her yes. eyes yeah she had her her own lighting crew follow her around <laughs> I, wish I had that just for dice just for the dice yeah. <laughs> Um, well, okay, you, you mentioned uh, playing Whittle so many times, and one of the, one of the things I've been curious about. I know B Dave has he has he has a freely spreadsheet. Like he's like I've got freely at every level and whatnot. Do you do anything like that? Do you like make multiple sheets, or is it do you have like the Whittle sheet? Uh, my project management kind of stays in my nine to five job. I am not that organized. <laughs> That's impressive that B Dave has like spreadsheets for freely. I should do that. No, <laughs> you have like 30 different versions of her in D&D &D Beyond though. Mm. And each, each one is kind of labeled why I created her or she's still with that campaign. So I, okay. I keep all of those different versions. I keep all of my notes, which are not that organized. Um, they're basically just sticky notes and I have to find them every time I, I play her. I, I um, understand you know. on a fundamental yep. level. Yep. Mine are digital um, <laughs> and not labeled at all. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, super easy to find when I need them. Yep. Um, but I've played um, like level 17, level 20 uh, wizard, which gets really complicated. So just trying to make sure that I 
practice and study before a stream <laughs> like that last episode of heroes of the plains that's part of the reason why i was agonizing because we were high level and it was this epic ending to the whole season yeah and yeah i have a lot of fun playing a high level wizard i think we've talked about that before i did play a rogue in um legends of the multiverse because i thought that would be oh, a right. nice Riddle. change and that would be yeah. simple but um i i like having lots of options even if it does get kind of complicated being a wizard what level did you all get up to in heroes or not heroes uh, uh legends in legends not very high um i want to say it was like level seven okay I'd have you to still check. got some still got some fun rogue stuff though yeah we got some cool stuff yeah I, I got to play a rogue yesterday and i forgot how fun it is to crit with uh sneak attack <laughs> 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 the math on that was fun mm -hmm. <laughs> once i got the hang out of it or the hang of it um i just had my calculator up so that i didn't make the dm do all of the calculations for me i have an, an app on my phone that has been one of the best things for me especially with a bunch of dice it's literally uh, uh it's called dice cruncher and it is literally mm -hmm. a calculator for dice like you I can put that. in you can put in like, okay, do eight pl uh, plus uh, a D20 roll. So it will roll a D20 and then add that to eight. Okay, uh, it, I am actually writing that down. <laughs> I need to download that. It, it's super cool. You can keep hitting enter and it will do different rolls for each one. I, I've, it's been great when I've been throwing a lot of damage at my level 15 party. Uh <laughs> I don't mean to brag. <laughs> yeah, I'm just throwing a bunch of, <laughs> you know, cone of colds at them. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. Yeah, you know, it's it's extra fun when it's underwater and then it freezes the water that they're in. Oh, <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Yeah, well, they realized it worked for them too, and then just started freezing all the bad guys. Nice. <laughs> um. Okay. So, so you, so you got a bunch of dice sets and whatnot. I I absolutely love that. I I. I feel the dreaming of being a minimalist in in my veins, uh, but you know, changing subjects a little bit. Uh, you uh, announced that you're going to be in D and D in a castle. Yeah, so that's coming up in spring, uh, round one for 2023, and I believe there's still uh, early bird discount happening through the end of the year. So definitely check that out if you're planning on going over there. Um, Todd and I will be co DMing. And we're still figuring out if it's going to be like uh, a campaign, like one setting throughout the few days that we're going to be there, or if it's going to be uh, different one shots per day. Mm. Um, but he will be sort of setting the tone and telling the story, and then I will be acting out the NPCs. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's going to be really fun. And um this will be my first time going to D and D in a castle, so I'm really grateful that they reached out and uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. So you haven't even gotten to go as like like a like a player or anything like no. this. Is, oh, that's gonna be I've, so cool. I've been to a castle in the UK before, but I've never <laughs> I've never played D and D in one, so that's gonna be. I I feel like they really knocked it out of the park with the name. Uh, it's like yeah, it's D and D in a castle. You're playing D and D yeah, in the castle. That's like, what exactly else do you what know? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I all the pictures I've seen from there, it just looks like so much fun. Mark Muir was posting pictures of his mm -hmm. game from the last go around, and oh my gosh! He, yeah, he dressed up like a lich character, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, Brought the full makeup cool. and everything. Well, it, it was also because he was he was still doing Black Dice Society, uh, calling in at like midnight his time <laughs> to play in that game. So he still had to have the full Uriah get up and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, also, I want to know how many bags that man brought. <laughs> Yeah, he had that's... minis and tiles. See, I would be so afraid of losing my luggage. Oh I my never, god! I never check my luggage, but I'm definitely gonna have to for D and D in a castle. <laughs> uh, but you, so so you and Todd are co DMing this. Yeah. Have you ever done co DMing before? Nope. Ooh. So this will be a, a new fun challenge. Um, I have DM'd. I've been DMing for Todd uh, mm -hmm. to sort of get some practice with that um and learning you know like the monsters and how that scales for the character level and really just learning the game mechanics because sitting in the dm seat is a totally different experience from being a player 
Mm -hmm. Um, And it can be a little intimidating. So I'm just trying to make sure that I have that comfort level going into D&D in a castle. Fortunately, I still have a few months to practice. So practicing is definitely going to be done. (laughs) I I totally get the, the intimidation thing. I, I've talked to plenty of people who want to do it, but that is the thing that is like keeping them from getting behind the screen is, is they're like, Oh, it's, it's too much pressure. And my, my favorite thing to tell people is just like, just do anything, like just have just fun anything. with it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like just get ridiculous with it. You know, your players want to be ridiculous. Follow that thread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was, I did um, a panel called uh, One Shots Tips and Tricks at Pax Unplugged. Mm. And uh, Nick from Scry Society actually had a really good question about how to um, write a setting for your players if you're a first-time DM. Or even if you're just trying to make sure that they they have a monster that they can chew on for a little while. <laughs> um, and, you know, being being new to it myself, I was, you know, taking notes from the answers that the other panelists were, were giving him. Um, but I, I did say it's not all up to the DM. Um, the DM's responsibility is to tell the story and move it along if needed, but the players play a big part in that storytelling. Yeah. Cause you, you can kind of, you know, like plant the seed for them and they, they just take it and they run with it. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's been episodes of heroes of the plains where, or like even legends in the multiverse where the DM will say something and then they don't speak again for 45 minutes because oh, the yeah. players are having such a good time uh, role playing and getting into it that it puts less pressure on the DM. Yeah. The, the, I've gone on record many times saying that like just everyone at the table is collaboratively storytelling and, mm-hmm. and the players should have as much say in stuff as the DM does w- when it comes to like world and whatnot, because they're in, they're influencing, they're they're changing it. Their actions should have this kind of ripple effect that goes out. I mean, especially if you're playing any of these like high level, well, not quite high level, but if you're playing any of these big D and D campaigns like Rise of Tiamat, you they went and fought Tiamat. <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> Their names should probably be known uh, for for quite a while and whatnot. As it turns out, Tiamat is pretty hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. Turns out she she's a tough one. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was like, wow, I don't I don't know how to contribute here. <laughs> I I remember that that boss fight. Uh, when we, when we did, uh, God, that was almost a decade ago now. Of uh, and the first time I did a breath weapon, I'm like, I think it was like, okay, that'll be like 94 damage if you fail, and they went, that'll be what? <laughs> <laughs> My first time fighting Tiamat was Idol Champions Presents, where there was the three groups that came together at the very so end. So cool! There are 15 people in one stream on one Zoom call. And nothing broke, amazingly. That was shocking. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, everything went very smoothly. And, um, well, I mean, except for the fight with Tiamat. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, God, that, that ending was so dang cool. <laughs> I I really love Idol Champions Presents. It's oh, yeah. Always, it's always high stakes. And everybody's Wh- bringing their A game. Wh- which ones? You were in uh, Black Pits, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that was why we talked last time. Actually, I think I'm wearing the black pit shirt under the. Oh, I am. I got the black oh, pit nice. yeah, shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, the, those those games have been so ridiculously good. Not even just like like not even just as someone who works at CNE or even just playing it and whatnot. Just it, it, it's one of those things that I, I I love of seeing these things cross over, seeing these storylines cross over. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually talked about that a bunch uh, for the Hunger of the Far Realm uh, interviews that I did recently of like the fact that it's like, yeah, it's Acquisitions Incorporated and Rivals of Waterdeep crossing over and mingling those two stories. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Yeah, the the way that the stories are interwoven and all of these characters that everybody knows and loves gets to play together. Mm-hmm. I, I really look forward to watching it every year. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, we're going to, we're going to be getting more of them, uh, more of them going spoilers. I know we're not saying, I'm not saying what it is, but you can probably assume there's going to be another one. Plus B, they've totally said there was going to be another one last <laughs> oh, <no>. week. <laughs> <laughs> we got some fun, su- fun stuff planned. Uh, Good. But yeah, no, I, I'm I'm very I'm very excited to hear how that goes for, at D and D Castle with you and Todd, 
mm -hmm. uh, DMing together because I, I, I love the two of you and I can't wait to see what kind of chaos that brings. <laughs> I, it's going to be really interesting because <laughs> i'm pretty sure whittle is going to be one of the npcs so and i might bring oh. back some other characters that i've played before too like sophia's oh very cool I, I think that would be cool bring bring my girl back yeah well so, well, so I, I do have to ask because like you know todd I, you know some may say uh has a uh um a, a darker tone for things <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he has a dark tone but he's really good at making it lighthearted. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a really good balance of the two. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, I mean familiar quest when when, when he was just like, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna take this show that everyone thinks gonna be a happy go lucky time with familiars and put in I know, Barovia. I know. Brilliant. We, <laughs> we still laugh about that because it is the darkest setting with the most fun loving familiars you've ever met. It's so good. <laughs> I love Gale. I just, I just love Gale so much with the, I would like to rage. I would like to rage, please. Um, if it's okay with you. <laughs> Gale was so sweet. I, I loved all those characters. Oh, yeah. Uh, but what, what I was going to ask was, like, do, do you find that with, like, the, the, you know, DMing that you've been doing and whatnot, do you find that your style is, is that way? Or do you have, do you find that your kind of style for, uh situations and encounters and whatnot is a little bit different from todd's um i i'm still kind of figuring it out mm -hmm. i think that my storytelling is a little unpredictable so it's it's always going to surprise you mm -hmm. i surprise myself with it because i don't <laughs> sometimes i don't know what i'm going to do and then i do it I'm like wow that's actually kind of good let me write that down <laughs> uh, and i i do um like a lot of homebrew characters um, and sometimes I'll I'll throw in a really famous character like Lord Soth. That was yeah the first thing that I ever threw at Todd, and he was climbing up a rope ladder, and Todd's like fireball. Now Lord Soth is in the seas somewhere. Uh <laughs> well, he's got really heavy armor on too. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if he made it. Um, but that was a really good first lesson in DMing. Make yeah. sure if you're gonna throw this high level character at your player, make sure you know you're if it's a wizard and you can fireball, they're not climbing up a rope ladder. There's, the, there's environmental things to consider. I, I had that moment uh, in fourth edition when I first started DMing. I, I had this, like, he wasn't, like, the big bad for the overall campaign, but he was, like, the big bad for what I was hoping for several months. Uh, he confronted them and took two steps, and my party just nuked him. Just... <laughs> absolutely uh, they're like we roll initiative all of them rolled over 20 oh, i rolled wow. like a 12 what? and they just boom 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 and just completely destroyed this guy and he <laughs> was like, it wasn't like okay, a god uh... or anything he was just a dude <laughs> <laughs> they just really didn't like him <laughs> yeah and i was like and i and i literally it was from one of the the box sets that uh, Wizards was putting out at the time, and I just took these two notebooks and I went, I won't be using you. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, never mind. Uh, one of the first games that Todd ever ran me and my friends on, it was a home game. Um, we were like space Vikings, I think. We were in this floating ship and we were about to dock in this town that was getting attacked by a bunch of dragons. Hmm. And we were all just like, um, no. I don't, I don't want to help them. <laughs> this, this whole story that Todd planned for this game, we just... No thanks, we're good. We just, we just left. But that's, that seems like a them problem. Tis a silly place. <laughs> I love that so much. Well, that, I mean, that's that's one of the things that I do love about DMing. Like, there, there's been a 100% the, you know times where i've had these things planned out and the players like no mm -hmm. no and, yeah, and you have you have to be prepared for that as a dm because yeah. you can't always map out everything that's going to happen you have to know that there's going to be some you know player involvement and some things are going to be unpredictable yeah and it ends up being kind of funny oh yeah absolutely oh i like like i, I was asking about like like style and stuff like i describe my style as a saturday morning cartoon like, like one of my players literally last night described uh, our group as uh, the Scooby-Doo gang in Pirates of Darkwater. 
and I <laughs> loved that description. Perfect. <laughs> um, and and yeah, do, doing that. Like, well, actually, what I was gonna do is, uh, uh, our green paradox in the chat actually said no, sur no scenario survives contact with the players, which is you know a statement I've heard Accurate. countless times. And but that kind of goes back to the the thing that I said about collaborative storytelling. It's just like you presented something the majority are like eh, we don't want to do that one and that's okay because that's the story that y'all are telling mm -hmm. and you can totally take those things later and put them back in and they don't even know it <laughs> yeah and it, it kind of feels so good i mean in life like when you cancel plans you're like oh my god that was amazing i don't have to go out now <laughs> like that's how it felt not going Megan, to that we town. Megan, we I feel like we need to be better friends. <laughs> but like online, right? Not yeah. like we don't leave the house. No, no, absolutely not. No, God, no. <laughs> yeah, no. We're we're cave dwelling creatures here. I never thought about that from the like a DUD player perspective of having that same thing of of my like oh I've canceled plans oh man I just get to do whatever I want tonight. Well, it's not that I don't want to hang out with people. I just don't want to go out. I yeah, mean, and sometimes I don't want to go to the space Viking place. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel like leaving my ship and fighting dragons. Like, even if they're not violent, I'm going to have to, like, flatter them because they're gold and oh, it's exhausting. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, I did see someone in the chat uh, ask about the, the the giveaway. We are working on it. Uh, Martin, let me know when uh, when we can do that one. Um yeah okay um but uh you can still put in your uh questions into the chat for uh megan and myself uh you can put that in with question colon and then your question uh and we will talk about it uh <laughs> if i like martin's response oh yeah i remembered that had to happen <laughs> uh so yeah martin is working on getting that giveaway going uh and when uh they do i'll let you know what the keyword is and you can put it in the chat and enter for a chance to win uh 42 chests of your choice excluding bahamut chests um <laughs> and uh and we'll, we'll get that going um so okay it, it see the thing that i wanted to uh, want to ask about the dd Oh, you know what? No, I got a better one. I was going to ask, like, if there was anything you could talk about that you and Todd have been talking about for planning D&D in the castle. But instead, you mentioned a charity one shot uh, before we started recording. And I want to hear about that one. It just started as a conversation and now it's actually happening. Um, uh, v and myself are planning a charity one shot that is going to be Golden Girls themed. <laughs> and Diana Demicki is going to be the DM. Uh, we're planning on a January 22nd uh, streaming date, so stay tuned for more details on that. I think we've all been watching a lot of Golden Girls lately. I mean, it's a great way to spend your time. Notes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Golden Girls was streaming from YouTube to my TV for 24 hours straight. Wait, it's on YouTube? It's on YouTube, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what my holiday break looks like now. <laughs> it's a good way to spend your break. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, have have you been workshopping a character for this one? I think I'm gonna play Whittle because she's she's already uh, kind of elderly, and I think by the time she's in the stream, maybe she's um, oh my god, look looking for someone to replace her as Dark Lord of Barovia. She kind of has been already, <laughs> anyways, and she's 423 years old in Heroes of the Plains, but in Golden Girls, I think she'll be closer to a thousand years old. Love it. Yes. And I'm still trying to figure out what Golden Girl Whittle is most like. I can't I can't remember the mom's name. The the the, the... Sophia. Yeah, Sophia, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I just like I'm just picturing Whittle, but like still goth form, but hunched yeah. over like <laughs> Sophia with the giant glasses <laughs> and like a cane. Like, oh my god, I need Oh yeah, that. yeah. She's <laughs> she's definitely gonna have um a tennis ball at the bottom of her screen. Yes. <laughs> Love it uh let's see okay martin has the uh the the keyword uh so when so don't do it don't do it yourself what wait for martin to put in there uh once martin starts it uh in the chat uh it is going to be insights lowercase all one word uh and it, the giveaway will be open for two minutes there it is ha ha which is delayed because we there's a delay <laughs> it's coming though yeah it's coming no, I, I, I love this. Uh, I didn't even think about this at the time, but uh, my, my home group, uh, session zero of this game in 2018, their group name has been the Golden Pals. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they, I can't remember how Golden Girls came up during the session zero, but they joked about it enough that I was just like, okay, well, y'all are the golden pals. Then they went, yes, perfect. Send it's it to print. Good inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Absolutely. And they, they, um, good. Some, I've, I've, posted about that on twitter and somebody commented uh there is a ttrpg tabletop game and i forgot the name oh, of it brightwood they, is it oh it uh it's the one where they solve crimes around the retirement community i is that so the one so fun fact i kickstarted that <laughs> no way <laughs> and i was i just happened to be looking at it today i've been like oh when is that coming are you serious yes uh when is that let me let me see out? No, I think it's well. I think because okay, if it wasn't, I was gonna back it like now. I think the I think the PDF is released, um, but I don't I don't think the the game itself has released just yet. Okay. Or no, I don't know. Hang on, let me check real quick. <laughs> My brain is all mushy. It is such a small world. That's super cool. <laughs> well, and and I almost brought it up when we were talking before the show. Uh, but but you know then then we did the show. Um. <laughs> Where is this one? I'm going. I I, I have I have a problem with uh Kickstarters. <laughs> Brindlewood. That's the name of it. Brindlewood. Brindlewood Bay Cozy Murder Mystery RPG. Um. Yeah, I think it's up on Drive Through RPG right now, and they're doing a print run next year. Uh. But yeah, I I saw the artwork and everything about this. I'm like, oh, I got to do this. This looks fantastic. <laughs> When they when they said Golden Girls with a, a murder mystery, that's that's all I needed. That's I just all I, needed. I just love that they're solving crimes in a retirement community. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, and it kind of fits into this weird head cannon I had as a kid. I thought Golden Girls and Murder She Wrote were like in the same universe when I was a kid. Because <laughs> when you were a kid, yeah, I, I could see that if you're not watching. <laughs> My grandmother would watch both of them, but I was just like, oh, it's the same show, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. They're about the same age. They're talking about the same thing. Yeah, you know. Um, okay, let's uh well real quick, what what was the 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 tentative date for that right now? The, uh, that Jan again? January twenty second. Okay. I believe that's a Sunday. Be sure to, to follow Megan so, so you can find out if uh, if that changes at all and when it's happening, where it's happening. Yeah. Um, okay, let's take a look at some uh uh questions from chat and see what they've been up to uh super collins says question what stream did whittle become lord of barovia or did that happen off camera that i think was in heroes of the plains because whittle and um well everybody in heroes of the plains uh killed strahd mm, that'll do and it then and then yeah and then whittle um took a little nappy nap in Strahd's coffin and I, I think that's how she became Lord Barovia. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that seems like a good place to take a nap. Yeah, okay. She's just, you know, she needed a long rest and she's like, well, there's a coffin right there. I'll just take a nap real quick. I mean, she she was damn fair at the time, so you know, that works. That works. Yeah, I don't I don't think we uh ever like specifically said it in Heroes of the Plains, but I think the backstory for Squiddle in a familiar quest kind of leaned more more into that. Absolutely. I still love Squiddle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going through my familiars today and saw Squiddle. I was like, ah, Squiddle. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have one character that I play that doesn't rhyme with Whittle, Squiddle, or Riddle, and that's Sophius. <laughs> <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> very different. <laughs> my one serious, sort of serious character. <laughs> that And that character is... Uh, um is married to uh I, why can't i remember todd's character's name right uh, now Averin. Averin, yeah that that's the, the she's married to Averin, right yeah and right uh, now they're i forgot the name of the place but they're in like the god resting land under a oh tree. i can't remember the I name almost of that said is god either. rest stop god rest stop <laughs> Yeah, it, it you only That'd find it on too. on strange nights on the uh, uh, you know some route in the middle of Arizona, <laughs> in the astral sea somewhere. In the astral sea. <laughs> uh, Lurking writer says, "Question: uh, Whittle has accomplished a lot. Is there something slash an adventure that you'd like to see her uh, achieve slash experience?" I would really like her to not have the responsibility of being the Dark Lord of Barovia. She does not <laughs> like responsibility, and she is looking for someone to fill that position. So if you know anyone. 
Oh my Let god. Let her know. Can you imagine a one shot where it's just Whittle doing tryouts for the next Dark Lord? I, I would do that. <laughs> that would be incredible. I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just going through all the candidates, and Whittle's just like, mm, no, too happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, actually, Cassius has a suggestion for it. Uh, Dark Lord Pest, anyone? <laughs> Not yeah. sure how old he'd be, but <laughs> you know what? I think I actually, I think Whittle or Squiddle talked to Pest about potentially doing that, and I'm, I don't recall if Pest was interested in that position. <laughs> Not only do I want pest uh in that position i just want to see uh ohenio <laughs> playing a dark lord i i think Eugenio would actually be perfect for yeah. that role yeah and Eugenio is just a great role player oh yeah I, oh i would love God. to see that i i like all i hear in my head is just extra and i'm i i think that's a good i think that would describe it pretty well <laughs> yeah. I, I think pest would probably do a better job than whittle I mean, well, I, he he is he is very like you know just pay attention to the little things, the the minute things. So maybe, but he definitely wouldn't have started a, a school for squidlings, and I feel like that's a that's a great you know public service. <laughs> uh, the lurking writer uh, has the last one question: Will we be able to watch this Golden Girls D and D game, and if so, when, where? Also, Whittle should definitely use the ruby rod as a walking stick. <gasps> I will now. Yes! Thank you for the idea. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we just have to put a little tennis ball at the end of, <laughs> of the Ruby Rod Blunderbuss. Um, so we we don't have a Twitch channel yet, um, but we are working on that. So once we figure out where that one shot's going to happen, um, we will definitely post about it. And that'll be happening January 22nd. Uh, sometime in the afternoon Pacific, I think 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Pacific. Got to get that early bird stream in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I I actively avoid early games. <laughs> <laughs> well, yesterday's game, um, I didn't realize until like this week that it was at 10 a.m. And I went, I'm rolling dice at 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's, but I, that's pretty brutal. But I, it's uh, a fun way to wake up. It is. It definitely is. Out of all the ways to do it, I think that's a great one. Um, I have joked about starting a brunch D and D game on a weekend sometime. We'll oh, that would be the... fun. Yeah, just get a bunch of mimosas and dice. <laughs> I like that. That could be the name of the group: mimosas and dice. Ooh, I do like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh well megan i think uh that is about the time that we got thank you so much for sitting down with me today and talking with uh yeah, talking with me about whittle me. and all this fun stuff uh if people wanted to find uh you and what you do on the interwebs where could they do so they can find me on twitter that's where i mostly frequent at megan can wrecked that's r-e-k-t um i'm i just joined hive I don't really know how to use it yet, so, but I'm well, there. Well, so Hive, Hive is down right now because oh, they, down? they've been okay. they're they're working on new security features and stuff like that, and I guess they had cool. to take the whole thing off for like a week or two. Uh, so we'll be back. Um, but yeah, I, I really and like and be, be patient with the developers. There's only like two of them, and they weren't prepared for the influx of users. <laughs> no, they were not. I, I that the day that that happened, I just imagined these two people going, "Oh, oh, oh what do we do? What do we do? Yeah. What do we do? <laughs> too much, too much success. Put put some of it back. <laughs> put some of it back. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, well, uh, Megan, thank you again. Uh, be sure to follow uh, uh, Megan on Twitter and catch uh, catch up with all the awesome things that she is doing and that charity one shot that I cannot wait to see. <laughs> I can't wait to play in it, and I, yeah. I'm I'm definitely gonna check out Brindlewood. That sounds yeah. like a good time. Uh, and also be sure to check out the the year five pack in game right now where you can get yes. the Whittle Dark Lord skin uh, and and rule Barovia in style. <laughs> Uh, but that's going to do it for this week's episode of Idle Insight. So until, oh, well, until 2023, take care of yourself. <laughs>